Uh, let's have our, our lesson. I am Mojo. I'm Morris Jones, and we do this every Saturday morning at 930. And we're doing defense topics uh, for a while, and we're going to continue with the subject of, uh, of third-hand play. Uh, and, and we've talked about third-hand play in several contexts. Uh, this time, we're going to talk about it when our partner leads a high card. Um, in uh, the previous examples, it's always been partner leads a little card. They're, they're fourth best. They don't have a sequence. Now, when partner leads a card like this, the queen, we know that um, that they have the top of a sequence. And as we have learning when we study leads against no trump, we know that um, generally, if you're not leading your partner's suit, then uh, whenever you lead a, a high card, it indicates the top of a sequence. And it should be three cards in the sequence, whether it's a solid sequence or a broken sequence or an interior sequence. And we're going to look at those examples today. So when partner leads the queen, we know that a, they don't have the king. Of course, we can see the king right here in the dummy. But we also know that they have the jack. And if they don't have the 10, then they at least have the nine. Uh, so they'll have a three card sequence. So this one's kind of obvious. If, uh, if declarer plays low from the dummy, what card should we play? Obviously, we should not play our ace because the partner's queen is winning the trick. I think the right thing to do is to play the, the biggest little card we can and let partner know that they should continue the suit. They should carry on with the jack, maybe do it again and keep going until, until we take all the cards. Now, this one's obvious, but let's look at a case that's not quite so obvious. Let's say now that partner leads the jack. And here's the dummy. <clears throat> now the question is, where is the queen? Well, we know where the queen is because when partner leads the jack, they specifically deny having the queen. So if partner doesn't have the queen, then the queen is sitting over here. So let's think about what's going on. Declarer has the king and the queen, and that means they're entitled to one trick in the suit, but only one. So if declarer plays low from the dummy, what's the right card for us to play? Third hand high would mean playing the ace, <clears throat> but this is a case where we must not do so. We have to let we have to let declarer take the trick with their queen, knowing that uh, now the king is trapped. And if, um, if this suit is played again, our partner's 10 will force the king, which we can cover with the ace, and declare gets one trick in the suit, the one they're entitled to, but they don't get two. Let's look at another possible situation. Uh, let's say here that partner leads the jack, and now we have the king. There are two cards we can't see, the queen and the ace. We know where the queen is. The queen is over here because it's not here, it's not here, and it's not in partner's hand. There's only one place it can be. When partner plays low, is it right for us to play the, uh, the king or not? Um, if, we, if we play low in this instance, let, let me show you exactly what's in the hands. Here's the queen in declarer's hand, and our partner has the ace. Does that surprise you? Let's think about this again. If this is partner's hand and they're leading this suit against no trump, this is a valid interior sequence, ace, jack, 10. They're missing the king and the queen. And we didn't know this would be the case when our partner led the jack. But when they do, <clears throat> and we can't, we can't see where the ace is, you have to guess that it could be in your partner's hand. There is a possibility that it's in your partner's hand. And you can see right now the right play for us to do is to play third hand high. And, and take the king. And then, of course, lead the suit back, where now the queen is trapped in our partner's hand. This is one of the reasons I love interior sequences for the way this can trap high cards in declarer's hand. Now, of course, when, when partner leads the jack this way, it doesn't mean that they are leading an, an interior sequence. Um, there's nothing we can do about it if they don't have the ace. We know where the queen is. The queen is over here in declarer's hand. But we not we still we can't see the ace. We don't know where the ace is. It could be in our partner's hand. What do we have to do? We have to play the king. And the idea is to protect partner's ace if they have it. Now, if they don't have the ace, if it's this kind of situation where the ace and the queen are in declarer's hand, you've done the best you could do. Your king, your king was toast no matter what. Uh, it was going to be gobbled up by the ace queen, 
and you haven't suffered you haven't sacrificed anything because you weren't getting anything to start with um the clara will win their ace and their queen and they were getting those two anyway this is an onside finesse but look you're going to set up your partners 10 and 9 and you are setting up two tricks in the suit regardless this is against against no trump contracts of course so th this is a little bit interesting uh concept let's let's think about this together um all right here's here's the obvious one if um the clara plays the four let me have you join in and get out your annotation tools if you see one click your card to play on the third hand here we're picking uh the six the queen the ace yeah the six is the one to play all right this one this is the obvious one our partner's jack is winning we can see all of the higher cards let's try it with this one partner leads the jack declare plays the four what card do you play now let me yeah let's um i would actually play the six it's the encouraging signal right we want to we want to uh play our biggest little card if we can all right, let me clear all of these. Let's do this again. Um, partner leads the jack. And notice now there are no high cards in the dummy. What's the correct card to play here? All right, we're all kicking up, clicking on the ace. That's, that's good. That's interesting. The ace is third hand high, of course. Let's look at this in terms of all of the cards and see what's, this is a good possible situation. Notice what your partner has led from here. Let me back up to the beginning. Your partner led from the King Jack 10, nine. This is a, a perfectly valid interior sequence. And this, the opportunity is here for this queen to be trapped. So when your partner leads the Jack, we know where the queen is, what we don't know is where is the where is the king? The king could be either here or it could be in declarer's hand. If it's in declarer's hand, they're always getting two tricks. There's nothing you can do about it. But if your partner is holding the king and they led from an interior sequence, then the right play for you is to protect your partner's king by taking the, the ace, lead back the suit, which is what they're hoping you will do. And then if declarer plays the eight, your partner's nine wins a trick. Uh, if Declare plays the queen, your partner's king wins the trick. You get all of the rest of the tricks. So this is why I love I love interior sequences. All right, I want to show um, one more situation that we need to deal with sometimes when partner leads a, a high card. I've got a few extra cards in the hand. I've got <laughs> some diamonds in here. But let's say that partner leads the king. We're leading against no trump. You see that we're in a no trump contract. Declare plays a little card from the dummy. What's the right card for us to play? I mean, it would seem like the right card would be <laughs> the uh, the three, right? Because our our partners. Uh, let me see. Don't uh, yeah. Stop stop making annotations if you would. Um, it would seem like <clears throat> our partner's king is winning the trick. So let's follow through with that and see what happens. What does partner lead next? Uh, let's see. We we play the three and. Declare plays the six. Okay, so next partner leads the queen. And of course, now we win it with our ace. So the thing for us to do, of course, is to lead back a spade, uh, except that we don't have any. And uh, if you show, if we show all the cards, uh, the interesting thing that happens here, I, I didn't put down a lot of cards, but Declare now wins tricks and they get all the tricks with the uh, with these with their diamonds. Uh, in other words, <clears throat> partner's spades are stranded, and he may never get those two spades in his hand if he doesn't have an entry. Well, how do we deal with this? What we have done is, is what they call blocking the suit. We have blocked the suit in this case. So when partner leads the king, the right play for you in third seat is to overtake his king with your ace, keeping the little card so you can lead it back to them. Let me show you how that works with all the cards showing. If I lead the if I lead the suit back, partner now gets to win the jack and the queen and the seven and the five. In other words, we get all the tricks. So unblocking is is one of these cases where you have to you have to block out your instincts about when to play a card. Your your partner is winning the trick. But it would seem like 
it, it can't possibly be right for me to cover their king with my ace, but it is. It's 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 the only way you can unblock the suit and keep playing the cards uh, in the suit that you want to set the trick with. You know, if this is one of the problems with being a defender, <clears throat> since you can't see your partner's cards, uh, you know, if you could see your partner's cards with a suit like this, if you were the declarer and this was the dummy, for instance, we would know exactly how to play it. We would play the high card from the short side. We would lead the five over to our ace, and then we would lead the three back to our king and, and queen and jack and take all of the tricks in the suit. Defenders don't have that luxury, and it's one of the advantages that the declarer has that the defenders don't. So unblocking is a thing, and players do this, and it's, <clears throat> it's an important thing to do. And most of the time, it will help you out by uh, unblocking your suit on one side. So with that in mind, let's look at some examples where it may not seem obvious. This is kind of strange. Okay, your partner leads the queen. We can see the ace here. We can see the king here. We have two cards in the suit, and we have the ace of diamonds. What do you play if declare if uh, declare pulls the ace from the dummy, winning the trick? Now you can pull out your annotation tool and pick a card. <laughs> Having some difference of opinion here. I love that. All right, let's stop and let's let's uh, let's clear the drawings and think about this. Suppose we let the uh, the ace win. Let's show all the cards. Okay, so the ace wins the spade, and now um, later on, let's say we get in with uh, a diamond. Of course, we've got the ace of diamonds here. So now we can play our king of spades, and it will win. And so now what we want to do is lead a spade over to our partner's good jack 10. What spade? Sorry, we don't have any spades. How do we avoid this situation? We have to unblock the suit. So when partner leads the queen and declarer wins with the ace, this is the funniest looking trick you'll see at the table. We play our king. And what we're doing here is unblocking the suit. Now watch what happens when declarer leads a diamond and we get in with the ace. We still have this nice four of, of spades here in our hand. We get to lead it over to our partner's jack 10 that takes all of the spades. Isn't that interesting? This is the kind of thing where you have to fight your instincts. Let's do this again. Partner leads the jack, and this is your holding. Declarer plays the ace from the dummy, just hypothetically. If Declare didn't play the ace, <clears throat> it'd be a little bit easier. All right, take out your annotation tool and pick a card. Okay, you're all a little bit trained now. It doesn't matter whether you play the king or the queen, honestly. Um, <clears throat> let's say we play the queen. Let me clear the drawings for a moment. I'll, let's say we play the queen. And now Declare plays diamonds. We get in with our ace. And now what do we play? We can have to continue to unblock because we have to play the king, you know, the high card from the short side. That's right. We're going to play the king. So let's see what happens. We play the king. And I'm showing all the cards just for fun. And we lead our two over to our partner's good 10 and nine. And we take the rest of the tricks and we set the contract. Let's do one more. and We'll call it a morning. That can go away. Okay, uh, let's say in this one, partner leads the five. This one's a little less obvious. Declare or plays the ace. What's the right card to put under the, uh, under the ace? We're not winning the trick. <clears throat> let's look at all the cards and see if that can help us decide. Again, we've got a little difference of opinion. Looking at all the cards, what is the right card to play? The right card to play is the king. We are going to unblock. We're going to play the king under the ace and let that ace win. Now, let's see, we get in with our ace of diamonds. And what do we have left? We have the three of spades. Notice how that the jack in declarer's hand is now trapped by our partner's queen 10. Uh, queen ten. So uh, we end up taking all the rest of the tricks in the suit. Declare, uh, partner can win the 10 and the queen drops the jack and we get the seven and we get all the rest of the tricks.
Okay, this is um, a great a case where it seems counterintuitive to what you would expect, but unblocking is very important on defense. So thank you all. Good luck. Have fun in the games today.